Oh, I recognize that face. You're in trouble, aren't you? Well, I'll take you out to the Outer Rim, but I don't think it's going to do you much good. Why? Well, there's a new bounty hunting group. You haven't heard? There's a two-faced Twi'lek and a pugilist droid. If I were you, I'd do my best to avoid the Salonian captain and the gandroid tech. Better watch your back or you're gonna get wrecked. The writing on the sky on fire. Heading to the edge of the empire. Your number's up and now you gotta pay. Running from the heroes of the Hadian way. Welcome to Heroes of the Hydean Way. This is a live play podcast that explores published adventures in the Fantasy Flight Games Star Wars RPG line normally. Our current adventure is Mask of the Power Queen and this is Act 2, Episode 7A. And I'm Ben, the GM for this adventure. I'm Brandon and I'll be playing K3. I'm Christine and I will be playing K1. And I'm Leslie and I will be playing 3B. To learn more about our characters, we get one hero to ask another a question. Today, we will get K1 to ask. 3B, what inspires you the most? I see. Maybe my translation matrix needs a little adjustment. Uh, 3B, can you say something else? Is Is this any better? Can you understand me more clearly now? Yes, that's much better. Fortuitous. Let us continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know this is not going to help anybody, but in my brain, 3B is now voiced by Michael Dorn. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that is kind of perfect. <laughs> okay. I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> So Christine just uh, I, I will contact make Leslie them. sound like Michael Dorn in post. Yeah, I uh, just deepen it. Okay, just like yeah. minus thirty pitch. <laughs> yeah, or like or like call Michael Dorn. Yeah, or something. It's okay. We're uh, we're bros. Well, you know. Yeah. I'll... What? Uh-huh. What's he even doing he was, these days? He was Rufus in in um, the Kim Possible movie. So the camera slowly comes up the landing ramp, taking a turn and going to the left. We find Vrebo and K1 talking late at night after everyone in the ship has turned in, getting the latest updates on the crew's exploits while 3B and Vrebo have stayed around making sure that the ship stays being the ship. Oh, oh my, that that sounds so intense. And you say Ilan was being a sniper? Yeah, yeah, they they volunteered to climb up this, well, with Billy's help, this, like, trash heap, and were picking off various beings. It was very gruesome. But did did you know Billy can fly now? Wait, but what? Billy can fly? Yes, Aww. much, much higher than, than myself or any of the other droids. That's impressive. I didn't know that. Huh. And... Barrowin! Barrowin stole a train! Wait, what? Barrowin? You mean Captain Barrowin stole a train? Yes. That that doesn't sound plausible. It happened by herself, too. Wow. One of these days I gotta go on one of these adventures with all y'all. Well, I'm sure things are pretty exciting back here. Now, what happened to you today, Vrebo, while we were gone? There wasn't all that much. I mean, it was just 3B and I. Well, there was that droid that came around again, but they just seemed to want to chat. And they're a very peculiar droid, always prefacing themselves with what they're saying or their intent before they say it. It's a very interesting way of talking, but I have not seen many droids like that. At least not ones that are free talking to any security droids yeah well they're always like that like it's always like stop don't go there or stuff like that but seeing a free droid that's odd hmm so this wasn't the same security droid that 
tried to contract the, the ship before? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It was the same one. Oh. J-12, I believe. Maybe they're just lonely. That too. I mean, being the only one of your kind anywhere. I mean, that's kind of what 3B and I usually end up talking about while we're in the cockpit. And does 3B answer you? Oh, no, not normally, but whenever I look over, 3B looks like they understand what I'm saying. Or at least they're looking at me because I'm talking or something like that. I don't know. Hmm. Speaking of, where is 3B? I left 3B with Billy. Like, they're, Billy's always so protective of 3B when Billy gets home. I, I don't want to get in Billy's way. That makes sense, Rebo. And it's at this particular time, I'm figuring that there's going to be a, a large crash that happens towards the back of the ship. What was that? Oh no. Should I go f- wake up everyone, or...? No, no, no. It, m- what if it's something uh, minor? Um, Maybe not a womp rat because they're huge, but maybe some little piece of little vermin got inside the ship. M- maybe you should go check it out, Rebo. Okay. K1 has scooted back a little bit on her repulsors, uh, making sure she's not in the doorway any longer. <laughs> Where would K6 and K7 be at this point? Just out of random curiosity. Uh, they can be wherever we need them to be, but if you are trying to get a stock answer, then it would probably be in Cav's workshop, because that would give the... That seems like a good place to, for the droids to recharge, because there's a lot more space there. Okay, that makes sense. And, well, yeah, the noise kind of was off in the direction of Cav's workshop slash the engine room, which I'm figuring it's pretty close to as well. I'll be right behind you, Rebo. And there's Rebo just sort of out in front, their custom blaster uh, out, sort of trying to sneak around. And it's like, wait, but who's there? Opening the door, flicking on the light, and it looks like just parts all over the floor. It looks like a couple of trays have been completely upset, and now just there are parts all over the floor of the engine room, as opposed to how they're normally put aside. Engine room or workshop? Engine room. I'm figuring that that, like, I'm figuring that in this ship, one door is Cavs workshop. The next door over is the engine room. That makes sense. And I'm assuming that the door to Cavs workshop is open because the rest of the droids. Are, are in there. Uh, while we're floating out here, uh, could I make a investigation check to see uh, if I might recognize anything about what could have done this? Uh, sure. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, listeners, we are using the Tales from the Loop system for uh, for today's adventure. Uh, K one is not trained in investigation. She does, however, have a mind of five. Uh, I got two, actually. So the way the system works is sixes are successes, and uh, I managed to roll two of them. So that's two successes, which is honestly quite a lot for the system. <laughs> Not bad for the original danger ball. <laughs> K one's not danger ball. Oh, you have to have a gun to have da- to be danger ball. Yeah. I feel like K1 is the But you, you call K4 ball. and 5 danger balls. They're not armed. Well, that's because I can't tell if they're K6 or not. K6 is yellow. It's better to just assume that they're all danger ball. Because K6 could have accidentally been dipped in paint. So having succeeded on an investigation check, you get to ask two, you get to ask two of the following questions. The first one I'm going to ask is, what has happened here? It looks like there was something roughly uh, cat-sized, like, well, sort of like chubby cat-sized, that has been hopping around. You can see that, and you're able to tell that the movement pattern doesn't look like a bunny. It looks more cat-ish. As things have gone from one place to the other, as trays have been upset, it looks like some some being has been climbing up the uh, uh, shelves and the work trolleys and whatnot and have like 
as they're pushing off, the trays have gone skittering and gone clanging to the floor, upsetting all the stuff that was on it, spreading it all across the floor. Uh, K1's second question, because she is K1, is what threats can I perceive here? I mean, it's an engine room, so like, you do have the engine core, reactor core, whatever they're using to get power while they're on the ground. There's that. Otherwise, most of the engines have been turned off. Like, I'm assuming it's like the sublight engines are idling or something along that lines that is keeping the power flowing or they're working off of batteries. But otherwise, like, the engines have been powered down. There are a lot of tools that have been uh, scattered around the floor, but threats for K1? Even with the flicking on the lights, it doesn't look like there's anything really there. Okay. Like, there's a lot of cranny, like, there's a lot of uh, holes and whatnot that something K1 size or smaller could get into, but there's nothing visible. Rebo, I think something's inside of the ship. Mm, That's not good. Can you see anything? K1 whips her head, which is really her whole body, back and forth looking around the room. No. Let me just check on the other droids real quick. And she'll move a little bit past and uh, try to just, like, poke her, her photoceptor around the uh, the corner into the workshop. Uh, to which you only see K3. The rest of the Ks are not there. Freebo! Uh, K1 is going to, to float over towards, towards K3 and uh, start checking her over for damage and... Uh, Trying to get her online if she's not. I'm assuming she's probably in sleep mode. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Uh, getting a computer out of sleep mode is the worst. <laughs> yep, I just have to restart her <laughs> several times. Force reboot. Get that little pokey thing to put it in the the reset. K three, K three, wake up. Oh, h- hello, K one. Uh, are you okay? Are you damaged? One moment while I complete a full diagnostic. During this time, K1's photoceptor, like, blinks off and back on, just waiting patiently. (laughs) Diagnostic complete. I am unharmed. By this point, Freebo's just sort of leaning over K3, nose, like, two inches away. The rest of them are gone. Yes. (laughs) Did you see where any of them went? No. I was in sleep mode. Uh, Did you hear anything? No, I was in sleep mode. So I think we as the audience, probably what, what K3 is, is beeping and K1 is translating. I'm generally assuming that, yeah, I'm assuming that since Rebo's there, K1's uh, translating so that Rebo can understand. Yes. It's the ramp down? And Rebo will stand up straight, give a thoughtful look, raise... There, raise his left hand with a suckered finger at the top, pointing up, open his tiny mouth as much as a Rodian can, like, uh, and then scurries off to the uh, landing ramp to find out if it's open or not. K3, we should stick together until we know what's happening here. Is there a situation? Yes, all of the other droids are missing and something got inside of the ship. There are many somethings in the ship. No, some, something that doesn't belong here. You don't need to be that literal. This information conflicts with my existing databanks. I mean, it could be a Minoc or something, which they feed on power, you know. Maybe maybe it was not looking for a snack. Or or it could be a loath cat. They like to play with droids until they fall apart. Or something, something even scarier. Well, well, surely the maker will protect us. I, Ilan is currently asleep. K1. Yes, K3. May I suggest a course of action? Of course. That involves waking up the Maker so that they can fix everything. I mean, we could. That is the only solution to problems I have ever encountered, and it's worked pretty well so far. Mm. For instance, do you recall that time that the Maker fell out of a starship? <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, actually, the Maker didn't fix that, did, did they? Hmm. That's a good point. We should do this ourselves. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) 
start following after uh, Rebo. Yeah, and I can just sort of imagine this uh, mechanical spidery sound after K3 has jumped down and is trucking along on the full ground. Yeah, I suspect K3 probably um, will almost always be climbing on a wall or something rather than on the floor just because... I mean, it's dangerous down there. You might get stepped on. <laughs> Why else have spider legs? I don't know, Christine. Why else have spider legs? Uh, to to clamp onto a uh, calf's arm. That's why. <laughs> Look, I never said it was a glamorous existence. As everyone gets to the uh, ramp, there's Rebo with their hand on the switch, uh, raising the landing ramp and closing the internal door. Because there's the two of them. And it's like, oh no. Oh, oh this isn't good. Someone could have gotten on. Hmm. Or taken the droids off. That, that's worse. And this is when I'm figuring 3B is going to hop out into sight. Is Rebo hanging out with K1 at this point? Uh, we are all together. Okay. Uh, 3B will appear, twitching nose, ears, flickering. But not say anything, because, you know, Rebo's there and covers to maintain. He just, he looks up at, at K1 floating and over at K3 and over at, at Vrebo. So and he hops over onto Vrebo's foot and waits to be picked up. And Vrebo reach down and pick up uh, 3B in one arm, like, in there. Because, okay, Vrebo's right-handed, so we'll pick up 3B in his left arm and sort of cradle them there as he's just sort of stroking 3B's head. It's like, oh, did you see anything? Uh, 3B will look up, cock, cock his head adorably and inquisitively and, and kind of waggle his ears and then look over at K1 like, what should I have seen? All of the droids are missing, 3B. I'm not. All of the droids <laughs> except for myself and K3, and presumably Billy, are missing. 3B nods. Like, good. Because that's not good if my if, if Billy is, is missing. He nestles into to Vrebo comfortingly. Um, would I have seen anything? Should I make a, an investigation roll myself? That would definitely work, yes. When you say C, do you mean sensed in the force? No, when I say C, <laughs> I mean C. Currently. Right. Wink. It'll be equal to your your mind. Then I will remind, uh, at least for your benefit, you and Brandon do have luck points if you don't like what you roll. So you can. I got and success. And that's what you need, probably. I'm thinking that while three B was doing whatever three B was doing, because well, apparently they were bored too. They may not have actually seen exactly what was here, but they did see a small furry being get onto the ship up the ramp, and proceeded that, yeah, a small furry being get onto the ship that isn't normally on the ship. That, yes, they did see possibly something like a toot cat get onto the ship. Uh, well, K1 is significantly concerned, correct? I mean, that's not unusual, but... Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, when isn't K1 severely concerned? Is K1 doing her twitchy kind of looking around at everything, kind of like not quite freaking out, but basically freaking out? Yes. She also, her little like manipulator claws are both in front of her, almost like like rubbing together like nervously. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 3B, we'll, we'll say. Has something occurred? I did see something enter the ship. What? What, what did you see? Was it big? Did it have fangs? 3B kind of does that thing where bunnies kind of rub their face on their, their chest, you know, kind of like, dude, I'm tiny. How am I supposed to know if it's big? But, um... I believe it was larger than I was. <sighs> was that big? We're, we're doomed! K1? Yes? You're larger than I am. That's beside the point. I would like to add that <laughs> Vrebo is larger than you by several times. We are not necessarily doomed. During this entire point, Rebo's just staring at 3B. 
Forgive me for my deception, Vrebo, but desperate times. Uh, I understand, I think. Hello, 3B. It is I, K3. Greetings. I have processed the information you provided and was able to eliminate approximately 73 billion possible forms of life from the description that you provided. That merely leaves 938 trillion forms of life known in the galaxy. We, so we are narrowing it down. I suppose this this is what I get for making a literal computer drawing. <laughs> you could also examine the possibility of eliminating creatures that do not breathe this atmosphere. Minox, for instance. But Minox can survive in a vacuum. We're not in a vacuum. Doesn't mean they can't survive outside of a vacuum, 3B. K1. Yes. I can't tell you to breathe. <laughs> can't tell Ill- Illin that either. K1. Yes. Process. Slowly. Okay. We need to search the ship and find this thing, and then Freebo needs to, um, needs to usher it off of the ship. Uh, okay. So, now that the gang's together, and Freebo apparently is the movement mule for everyone. I mean, I can I move mean, on K3's my own, but this, is, this yeah. is dead convenient. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're clearly going to have a chase scene in the middle of the ship at some point, right? Where it's just like three Bs jumping around, like bounding off of things, and K3 is like climbing up stuff and around stuff and so forth, and K1 is just kind of floating around in all the different directions in a panic. Frantically hovering. I hope we just have like a uh, Scooby-Doo scene where we're running somehow into one set of quarters and popping out another in the main hallway. Yeah. And then at some at some point we're just like running in a, in apparently a straight line through this not actually very big ship for just an extended period. Well, of that's time. the beautiful thing about being so tiny is it is a very big ship for us. Three um, B's that is true. Three B's gonna so, look over at K one. What precipitated this concern? All of the droids are missing, and there is a big mess in the engine room. I am not missing. <laughs> Neither is yourself. Do you not have communications with them? Oh, I, I do, I do. I didn't think of that. <laughs> Freebie shares a kind of deadpan look with Rebo. Rebo will shrug. <laughs> how does a rabbit give a deadpan look? Very carefully. And I guess I know how Judy Hopps gives a de- deadpan look, so that's pretty close. I, I guess Key One is going to try to send a like wake up signal over her comlink to the comlinks of uh of K four five six and seven. Okay. Um. It cannot. It can just fail. <laughs> Interference. Yeah. yeah um, not, not connected to the ship's Wi-Fi. They're on privacy mode. We were just making a joke about how computers are hard to come out of uh, bring out of sleep. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of going with that. It's the kid equivalent of five more minutes, Mom. Pretty much. You know that they aren't there. As Key One attempts to contact them, Like I'm kind of assuming that's just sort of a broadcast to all the Ks, and like K3 gets it. Hello. But you don't get anywhere <laughs> back from any of the other Ks. Though, uh, very shortly after, you hear what sounds like a... Stunbolt gets shot out from the engineering room. Ears up. Swivel. Okay, now we should wake up, Ellen. Would that not possibly be one of the other Ks? Oh, right, they have a stun setting, too. Um, maybe? Uh, what w- we should... I, I guess we-, we should take a look, right? Right, yes, we should take a look. I shall investigate. K3 investigates. All right, after getting there... It looks like a, as you round the curve to getting to the um, engineering room, because I'm figuring YT style engine or YT style hallway. Yeah, I assume the interior looks pretty much stylistically similar to uh, the Falcon. Yeah, I'm just sort of figuring that there's the racetrack circle going through that you can just run around, do the entire uh, Scooby-Doo thing. Just in a circle. <laughs> and then not figuring out the... Oh, I mean, yeah, it's not its not the backwards. Scooby-Doo thing if it's actually in a circle. Oh, <laughs> uh, sure. It, it is if you don't actually change the camera. Just keep running past it. 
Exactly. Then we're like 1960s cartoons. Um, so when you get there, you see a bunch of tools that K1 and Freebo had seen in the engine room, but still on the floor, now skittered across the hallway. This this is a mess. Okay, say so I, I I didn't I didn't entirely process what you just said, so say that again. So K1 and Freebo had seen the entire floor of the engineering room covered in tools and pieces of equipment and like the Illins uh nut jar just completely strewn across the floor. They're a tech. They've got like a jar of screws and a jar of nuts and bolts that just random extra things like you get from Ikea or something. Now they're just sort of strewn across the floor. Allen wrenches. There's a million Allen wrenches. Everywhere. So some of that the had been on the floor in the engine room is now strewn across the hallway. It looks like it's been shoved or ejected from the engine room. And you can even see a hydro spanner that somehow caught something on the interior wall and is now just sort of hanging there on a half ledge. Like it just somehow was able to hook onto a bolt. It's just head. hanging there swinging slightly. This is unusually messy, even for Illin. Hey. Yeah, they probably deserve it. <laughs> There's no evidence that the maker has been awake since our conversation began. So it must be the intruder. And now it's armed. Or it was one of the K's dealing with the intruder. But they didn't respond to Combs. I, I'm willing to say that is concerning, but not condemning. Is there any, uh, I, I know we don't exactly, well, 3B has a nose. No, the droids don't exactly have noses, but is there any, like, the ozone in the air, like, where the, the blaster was discharged? Can we try to pinpoint where that happened? Uh, it doesn't look like it happened here. Like, it doesn't smell like it. Uh, as Vrebo and 3B and maybe K1, I'm just sort of figuring that everyone is just sort of doing the classic sort of Scooby-Doo lean out over the door jam. Well, you'd have to hold me. <laughs> no, I mean, Rebo's still uh, holding 3B. on so top of like Rebo's head now. Lean out over. Mm, yes. There's K1 above 3B, and I'm not quite sure where K3 is. On the wall? On the ceiling. Oh, on the ceiling. Upside down. Yeah, just sort of looking down, upside down. And inside, you can see this... Now, it looks like a clear path going from the right-hand side to about halfway to the uh, engine door. And you can see, actually, four paws of grease that then jump up, jump up, and then somehow go into the... uh, Look to somehow scramble onto the upper access ladder, and then the trail gets lost. Mm. K1? Yes? I dare say we can now exclude Minox from our suspect list. Maybe it's something quadruped and a Minox. There are no known uh, quadrupedal subspecies of Minox. Thank you, K3. K1's going to float over to the uh, little access ladder. Very, very cautiously try to poke her her, uh, ball head slash body up to look inside. Um... I'm assuming, like, the glow rod's oh, on is K1's looking up. Just setting yourself up for a jump scare. I mean, K1 is the right person for it. What I'm figuring is I kind of want to get a move uh, check off of uh, K1. Okay. Well, uh, K1's body is a mighty two, and uh, her move is one, so she's going to roll three dice. Have we mentioned... Like, what difficulties are in this system? I don't think we've really talked mechanics at all. I don't think so. So you, you're referring to the fact that normally it's just, you just need a success. Right. Uh, you alluded to earlier that it's a, it's a dice pool of d6s, and each die that rolls a 6 is a success. And you get a quantity based on your attribute and your skill by adding them together. And uh, generally speaking, one success is good enough for most things. Uh, two successes is like pretty pretty exceptional. 
and three successes is basically where it tops off. Um, that's for doing really, really tremendously impressive or unlikely feats. Um, although that is all modulated with the with the basic assumption that the player characters are uh, kids between 10 and 15. I mean, fair. I mean, that is also the entire reason why I was seriously considering doing Grimm instead. Because, like, same target character age group so anyway that's uh that's what the numbers of successes we get mean yes uh and also just for the sake of the listeners uh k1 is built as a like 15 year old kid so on the higher end of things so lots of attributes and she has nothing of a resource called luck that allows you to re-roll and uh the other two are built as um what 10 year olds so they have Fewer attributes, but a lot of luck to their names. So speaking of being lucky, though, uh, D1 has apparently decided, well, with narrative dice, it hates us. With the D6s, it loves us, because with my three dice, I managed a success. So as K1 is looking up, I'm figuring like the glow rod is giving a pretty solid circle, especially this close in. Travels up, travels up, travels up, and then looking up, you can see this... Uh, purple cat-like being that then uh, scrambles for a moment on the top rung and loses purchase. And they come falling down. K1 is able to dodge out of the way. and She shrieks anyway. And the cat-like being lands on their feet and then runs off into a low cubby on the engine block going left so as they're jumping around stuff as they're just trying to move and it looks like previously they had stepped in some grease so they're not getting great purchase everything that they're trying to step on is getting flung backwards so and then it's it's down uh rebo just sort of gives it yeep (laughs) as they're surprised and it's bolted off into one of the access uh, cubbies, one of the Lucas tubes. <laughs> Wouldn't they more likely be like Macquarie tubes or something? Yeah, sure. K1? Yes, baby? Are you well? Um, well, I'm incapable of having a heart attack, but I fear a few of my servos are fried from that experience. Because a few of my circuits are fried from that experience can't fry a servo k1 come on <laughs> k1 you are speaking gibberish pause reboot your glossary you try knowing three million forms of communication keeping it straight okay um okay i'm fine 3b hello it is i k3 good evening k3 how may i be of assistance i've, I've calculated that it is a 99.7 percent probability that that felinoid is the intruder. This meshes well with my theory. Also, it is not a Minoc. Correct. I have an idea. K1 is going to float uh, back towards the, uh, uh, in the direction of the cargo bay. Do we have any cargo netting around from when we oh, brought yes. things aboard? Oh my gosh. Absolutely. How do you think Cav decorates? Uh, she's going to snap off, like, uh, like detached uh, some of this netting and start dragging it back behind her towards the group. And Rebo's going to uh, come over and actually pick it up. It's like, oh, what, what are we doing with this? We need to catch it. The cat. Perhaps we should first locate it once more. Well, but now when we locate it, we can do something about it. Besides just being scared of it, right? I Indeed. concur. Though I must admit I felt no particular concern let us search for the creature that we may remove it from our presence yes yes all right three b's gonna hop towards the um macquarie tube yes in question quietly right. quietly k1 will start to lower herself till she's almost touching the ground so she can flow into the macquarie tube after three b k3 will also be there on the ceiling yeah just kind of somewhere if the tube is circular, presumably it'll just be on the interior and some some angle. I'm figuring more squarish. 
Okay. Like ventilation tube. Thromboid. <laughs> yeah, they're just slanted for some reason. Because it looks cool. All right, I'm guessing there's no lighting, really. Um, well, there is lighting coming behind you okay. in the form of K1. K1. Yeah, makes it harder to sneak, but let us move forward. I can turn it off if it's better. Is there like um, running lights? Just like a little strip of LEDs every few feet. That's kind of what I'm thinking. It's like it's not much because you don't really want to waste a huge amount of power on it, mm-hmm. but this is one of those things of it does have always on lighting going through there. So yeah, like every foot or so it's got a uh, light that it's not particularly bright, but it's enough that you can see things. Uh, then 3B will just kind of nod shortly at K1 to extinguish the glow rod. You And she'll just like turn it off. Now we must focus on the hunt. Creeping, creeping. Cute little fluffy tail. Is it a straight line or does it curve? I'm figuring that it's a uh, very old school trekish when we're talking about tubes. They aren't really in a straight line. It's they're going around every piece of equipment and it's it is trying to get to places. Like yeah, they try and keep them in a bit of a straight line, but it's like straight in for a bit, then has to turn because it's going close to the outer hull and then uh, comes back in as like as you're going you can hear uh Billy recharging and then a little bit further and you can hear Ilan uh chattering with her mandibles. It's a noisy sleeper. Yeah, it's not like they can snore, but they try. <laughs> um now three B spends a lot of time wandering the ship. More time than, than most people might actually suspect. Um, so I imagine 3B's been through the, the tubes fairly regularly. Is there anything out of the ordinary aside from paw prints as we go forward? Uh, currently, no, there is not. Like, you do see, for the first bit, you see uh, the greasy paw prints, and then they're very quickly, by the time you get to, say, Billy's charging area or Billy's room they're gone and it's just you know that the cat has to have gone through here but on account of there's forward and then there's back so yeah there's there's no way like there's not like an open hatch into any of the other rooms well yeah like there is grading going off into every other room but so far at least going into Billy's and Illin's there is not um, is 3B, f- uh, 3B, sorry, is Rebo following behind us? Uh, no. Okay. It's, Rebo doesn't think that there's enough room for Rebo and the netting. Okay. So, 3B is currently planning on either discussing things with the creature or scaring it back toward the netting. Okay. I'm very interested to find how this creature made its way onto the ship without being discovered at any particular point. Well, the ramp was down. Why was the ramp down? Don't know. Maybe that's standard procedure? Maybe somebody forgot to raise it? Who was the last person aboard? Then all photoreceptors turn at Illin. <laughs> what are, what are, which, K3 is obviously computer droid. Is K3 also the spider droid, like the spider whippy tail yeah. thing droid? Yes. Okay. K- K3 is the, the droid not like all of the other droids. One of these droids is not like the other. Yeah. Uh, K3 is also the the pilot and has a lot of weird skills compared to the other ones. Fair enough. Um, 3B is going to call K3 forward. Hello, 3B. It is I. Good. <laughs> Hello, K3. K- K3. Yes, as you have previously mentioned. Um, perhaps you would like to apply your intellect as we progress for logical outcomes of this creature's presence. I would. What scenarios would you like me to calculate? 3B kind of casts a very cautious glance over the shoulder at K1, and then leans in and very quietly says, Hostile resistance. Uh, and then K3 probably says quite loudly, The probability of hostile resistance is approximately 83%. Wait, what? 
Most felinoid species do have uh, certain defensive capabilities. Aww. Many of them are predators. Predators? And thus, and thus by nature have fangs, claws, poison spines. I was waiting for some sort of... Prehensile tongues. <laughs> what? The ability to stun you with the force. Mm. Excuse me? Claws. You said claws Bones first. Talons. Okay, that's enough. That's enough assessment, K3. Quite enough. What would you say that your weakness against bone spurs is? Uh, Christine, how reinforced are the case? <laughs> uh, here's the unfortunate thing. I think K3 is the squishiest. Because I know K3 doesn't have any armor. Oh, my instrumentation is exceptionally fragile. Hmm. Uh, K3 soak is a mighty two. We shall endeavor not to anger it. But come, let us continue looking. Hop, hop, hop. Okay. If I may suggest, anger is not the emotion that we should be fearing. Oftentimes, these sorts of animals respond more readily to fear or perceived aggression from competitors like ourselves. In short, it may be as afraid of us as K1 is of it. <laughs> and everything else. I, I would like to note, however, that my physical appearance does not denote competitor. So we're all harmless here, but not prey. No, harmless is... Pr Never mind, K1. Oh, okay. In many biospheres, the general structure of my chassis would suggest an arachnoid or possibly insectoid predator. So depending on the origin of this feline, I may be perceived as a potential threat. Or a potential food source. Hmm. I'm liking liking this less and less. I would like to not be first in line. <laughs> and K1 will actually rather uh, valiantly for her kind of like scoot K3 a little bit further back and we'll we'll take uh, we'll put herself between K3 and the potential predator. That might be. And 3B will keep leading. That's fine. Kapla. <laughs> I want, like, fan art now of 3B with, like, the wharf, like, bandolier uh, and, the uh, and like, a batleth. Yeah. And an eeny meeny little batleth. I mean, 3B is the most decorated. That's why 3B is in charge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he does have a collar and a tag. Yep. The most decorated. We don't have any of those things. You have probably serial numbers or something. Yeah, K1, okay. K3. They're not very long. Okay, everybody. We need to stick together. We need to drive that cat back to Vrebo. Ben, I would like to attempt to lead. You are wanting to lead. Yes. So, uh, leading, uh, if you have time with, uh, well, I guess we're not kids. Uh, the rest of your group, though, you may inspire and prepare them for a difficult situation. You roll to overcome trouble. And your successes become a dice pool that may that in the upcoming scenes can be distributed as bonus dice to the other kids when they roll to overcome troubles, but only if they do as you say. You cannot give these dice to yourself. Okay, that sounds fairly practical considering the pause and discussion thing. Sure. For listeners, trouble is basically just the tales from the loop uh, word for uh, test or check. Good to know. For listeners, yeah. <laughs> Could we argue that my iconic item of my uh, my translang uh, translator, audiovisual translator, uh, is in play here, since I am communicating among these different languages? I could go with that. Yes, yeah, sure. Only because Ben Ben is very nice. Also, it's not it's not the easiest iconic item to use. Uh, so, an iconic item when it's in use grants. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brandon. It's two bonus dice, right? I believe it's two, yeah. So uh, three heart and one lead plus the iconic item brings key one up to 66. And I managed one success. Uh, so I will have two bonus dice I can distribute to 3B and K3 in the next scene. And thusly we round the corner. And thusly you round the corner to the miniature hydroponics cabinet. Vistrano's hydroponics cabinet? Yes. The place that looks like the um, vent is actually hidden in behind 
the bench that Vestrano put in. So it's not very obvious if it ever is opened. And it looks like the top hinge to it is very well oiled. So as like 3B noses it open, can't detect that at all. We should check this out. After you. 3B's already in. Vestrano was fiddling in here before they left. Must see what they've done. Looking for vegetables. Do I, do I actually, I'm, I'm going to draw myself away from the greenery. Uh, do I see any, any evidence of our current quarry? Actually, yes. Yes, you do. You see it in a corner next to the uh, exterior door. This hydroponic bay is in a, like, the closet right next to Vastrano's uh, quarters. Normally, in a normal ship, this would be a place where, like, cleaning stuff would be stored or, like, extra parts or something. In this case, cleaning stuff. Are you saying our ship is abnormal? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, (laughs) So, like, that is normally what would be here. In this case, Vestrano's cleaned that stuff out. It's now generally in the cargo bay. And, like, you've got the hydroponic racks here. You've got, like, the cage over it. It's set up so that it can handle actual uh, high-intensity movement. And creature? creature like there's the door out into the hallway and then the creatures on the ground sort of um back arched in the corner next to the uh door it's looking at me 3b it's looking at all of us k1 i would like to empathize peace creature we mean you no harm there's a 23 percent probability that its vision is based upon movement if we remain very still we shall be invisible Okay, don't move. Uh, so you are making a uh, skill check, uh, Leslie? I would like to empathize because as I understand it, you told me it helps me kind of figure out what's going on with the other creature potentially offering weak points or points of leverage. That is correct. All right. So I just do that? Yeah, that sounds good to me. And then um, we also have the two bonus dice. You can pull one from if you need it. Uh, I'll risk it. I shouldn't have. You do have luck points. What does luck point mean? That I get to reroll one? You get to reroll all of them, I believe. I think so. I think it's any number. I think it's any number that you want. I don't think it has to be all of them. Yeah, in case you want to go for more successes, I think you're right. So Guess what? I didn't have any. Okay. So, uh, no dice on either attempt. No, the problem is there's 12 dice. Well, yeah. And, none of, and all of them betrayed you. I think you can also, um, if you want rerolls, uh, take a status. Correct. You can take a condition, condition. which yep. uh, th- a condition will uh, is something like being scared or or injured or angry, and it does minus one from any other dice check you make though for the rest of or until that condition is healed. Um, so it is a bit of a, a risky uh, situation. There's also nothing stopping you from continuing to burn the luck points up until you are out of them. I will try one more. Okay. Do you want one of those bonus dice now? No. Okay. By my own hand or none. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Shortly after K3 says vision is based on movement, you know, 3B is like, I've got to get closer. So he had been on the, the ledge that surrounds the, the glass and then had hopped up higher for a better vantage point, and then has hopped down lower and is now on the the main level again, looking down at the cat, ears up, twitching. Oh, I got two successes. Yeah, yeah, you did. You did. So, so you um. So I picked two questions from the list. Yeah, you get two questions, but you actually get a third question, uh, because you had the extra success, and you can take plus one die on one roll when you use the information you gain from asking that uh, question. Okay. Um, I would like to start with what does she want? Um, or it, they. Yeah, they, he. they they just use female pronouns on the thing here. The cat you can tell is confused at what's here. Like this is from like you can tell this cat thinks that this isn't the ship that should be here. That 
the ship that uh, they're normally uh, that they were expecting to be here and expecting to uh, get onto, this isn't it. It looked kind of like it, but now none of the smells are right, none of the people are right, and there's a lot more small things on here. It's like, and now the cat is kind of think like the cat's wondering like what happened to the ship that they've been calling home what what will she do if i try to communicate you can tell that she seems to feel that she's a bit trapped right now that she'll probably talk to you but whether like they're they're really a trapped cat so they've they have their backup and everything like just yeah so she's ready to run yeah like right now not seeing a direction to go because you've got the big ball thing and the spider thing in the way of the mercury tube the door is not open and well they're probably getting close to trying to fling themselves at what they think is a door opener, but they're not quite sure if they can make these ones work. We need to scare it back towards Rebo. We do not need to scare it. K1. What? That was your idea. You said that. K- K1, try the universal greeting. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> no, not that one. That's not the universal greeting. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, out. Bra- Brandon, I don't, re- I don't remember what that is. Uh, although I feel like I should, so now I've got to look up Transformers the movie. <laughs> what? This, this is a reference. <laughs> ba weep grana weep nini bong. <laughs> there you go, Brandon, just for you. I can die happy now. Ba weep grana weep nini bong. <laughs> <laughs> Transformers the movie. It's a thing. No, no, that's... I mean, we are on a junk planet. This is very yeah, appropriate. Yeah, right and to be sure, actually, your deliveries were also pretty on point. But no, no, 3B literally just repeated it back and looks over like, that's a thing? I suggested we frighten it when I believed it was just a mere animal. She has more to her than this. Perhaps we should communicate. Does she have a, a tag like me? I'm gonna go with No. Doesn't look like there's a tag. Uh, does look like there's a collar, though. Uh, doesn't look like... Uh, it looks like where the D-ring would go, the um, extra stitching for that would keep the D-ring on has come loose, and it's just sort of a flap there. It's only attached on one side. Okay. Perhaps we should comfort it. K3, how do we do that? One moment while I access my databanks. <laughs> and now I'm just sort of thinking, like, K3 getting up on their hind pincers, making uh, big movements. Uh, I don't know if there's a roll I can make to know how to make it calm. Maybe that could be a comprehend, since we just in- took in new information. Yeah, that actually does comprehend make sense. Comprehend is probably the best. That does make the most amount of sense. We can make sense. Don't get used to it. Oh, trust me, I won't. Uh, no pluck point? Okay, I'll take one. All right. So, yeah, it. you're relatively sure that if you are calm with the cat, that you're in just try and talk to it calmly and not try and scare it, it will probably sort of stress itself out and calm down on its own when it sees that there isn't anything major going on. When it doesn't feel that it has to be on the defensive anymore, it'll start calming calming down. Or, yeah, like, charming it could work. 3B, uh, why don't you calm it down? I suppose I shall try. I have some familiarity with such creatures. We still have two leadership dice if you want to take one. Alright, I will take one and I will, I guess, roll a heart charm. It's about as good as you expect it to be, friends. I want to be friends with this kitty. I'm using a luck point. They're all going to be gone very soon. Oh, man, then the kitty can become your iconic item. (laughs) (laughs) Just sort of thinking, all right, yep. Bam, 
Yeah. So 3B hops down from the table and ooches forward very gently, nose kind of twitching, and he cocks his head, head to the side and says, How may we help you? I, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm going to see if I can't uh, translate kitty noises since I can translate bunny noises. Can you, or am I just speaking? I don't like to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Existential uncertainty. Can you please get a calculate check? Uh, sure. Now, this is obviously using my iconic item. Uh, my yes. calculate, calculate is tech, so that's five, three, so that'll be ten dice for me. Dad, gum! This is what K1 does! Uh, and I have one success out of that. But you have one success. Calculating. Processing. Processing. Ding! Processing! Why? Who? Who are you? What are you doing on my ship? Oh no. Is this my ship? Oh no, 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 no. Why? My name is K1. This is K3. And this is 3B. We are residents of this ship. Uh, the ship's name is the Sky on Fire. Um, what is your name? Uh, what ship are you looking for? Maybe we can help you get home. I'm Thaddeus the Fourth, and I am normally on the ship Hyperspace is Blue. <laughs> A ship much like this one, but... It at least is the same designer for many things look familiar, but not. It's so much larger than the one I was expecting. Hmm. Well, well, Thaddeus, maybe we can uh, find your your lost ship. Uh, K3 is quite adept at uh, accessing computer systems. K3, do you think you could find out where the hyperspace's blue is uh, presently docked? Or if it is on this planet. Yes. Please do so now. Alright. That one also is going to be a calculate. I actually did not put quite as many points into this as K1 did, but uh, close. There's still one more leadership die, too. I'll take it. So that'll put and me... That'll put you're me also like a younger droid. Yeah. Actually, um, can I interface with a... Can I go somewhere to interface with like the shipyard computer system? I'm figuring that would actually be accessible like through the normal power lock or power connection. Sure, that's fine too. I'm just trying to look for a way to use my iconic item, which is a vintage scomp link. Oh, like you can absolutely go into the scomp link uh, port inside this closet then, yeah. Okay, I will uh, will do that. Hey, that's nice. On 11 dice, uh, 4 tech, 3 calculate. Uh, vintage conflict. Two successes. Yes, you are able to find out that the hyperspace is blue is in a nearby landing port or landing bay. And it looks like the registration for it has been recently uh, re-upped in the spaceport. It looks like it at one point had used this but it went away and then it came back and it's now, uh, it is in a hangar bay, uh, two down. Good news. The vessel is merely in a nearby docking port. It appears that they left and we took their parking space. Oh, well, that's convenient. To reach the vessel, you must merely leave this ship, travel 37.1 meters due north, bear north northwest. Approximately 18 degrees. Travel 109 meters in that direction. If you reach the, like, taxi queue, you have gone too far. Okay. We can, we can get that far, right? Is K1 volunteering? Well, I'm, I mean... K1, I'm very proud of you for suggesting that we escort Thaddeus to her ship. Well, actually, it is scary out there. There are slavers. Tha- <laughs> To a droid, basically everybody is a slaver. And and that security droid was telling us about other threats to ships and, and individuals here. We can't leave the ship. K-1? Yes? I'm very proud of you for suggesting that we escort her back to her ship. 
We should. No, 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 no. We, we shouldn't do that now. That's very, very dangerous. I think 3B is already probably hopping back. SK one's protesting. Uh, uh, 3B has hopped back up to the table and from the table has hopped across to the door and hit the button to open it. Okay, and then the place where I'm going to end this episode is as 3B is opening the door, there's Freebo trying to launch forward with the uh, cargo netting to try and capture the cat. Oh! No, 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 no! And accidentally stepping on uh, the cargo netting as they're reaching up with it, thus tripping, falling, and then trapping themselves in the cargo netting. Oh, gosh. All the while uh, laying across the threshold of the door. Hello, Vrebo. Hello. Ow. We're going to escort the cat back. Uh, okay. Perhaps you should take more daily physical training. We shall return. Hop, hop, tail wiggle. Each of us in turn like hops over top of Rebo, crawls over top of Rebo, flies over top of Rebo. <laughs> and as ev- everybody's like gone off out of frame, even the cat's kind of, kind of minced her way around, like not really wanting to step on him. 3B sticks his head back in and says, take care of the ship. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Heroes of the Hydean Way. You can find show updates on Twitter at The Hydean Way, and you can find me, Ben, on Twitter at Deuterium Ice. I'm Brandon, and I'm on Twitter at Blue of the Kin. I'm Christine, and uh, you can find me, or K1, uh, on Twitter at Twelfth Night. That's 1, 2, T-H, and a K. And uh, if you want to hear more from me, uh, you can check out my other podcast, The Glass Dagger, a D&D 5e actual play podcast over at completenight.com, also night with a K. And I'm Leslie, and you can't find 3B with me because 3B stays with Vrebo. But you can find me at LeslieGS, you know, if you want. We are all at theheidianway.com, where you can find previous episodes and our sister podcast, Tales from the Hydean Way. Our podcasts are on Apple and Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify, where you can find more episodes and help us out by rating and reviewing the show. We're also on Facebook as Heroes of the Hydean Way, and you can holocom us at heroes at the If you like what we do and want to support the show, you can find us at patreon.com slash the Way. Or you can donate a calf to us at ko-fi.com slash the Way. Or you can find Brandon and me at Enterprise Club at all of your fine podcasters. Uh, it's it's like coming home getting to say the Patreon thing again. It's a lot easier to say. 